I am a bit sleepy and um, if I will forget anything, just let me know. Um, you can ask your questions. So I was asked to make something uh, very practical. Uh, so I will be trying to focus on the specific tools, uh, solutions, uh, features uh, that you can use in your uh, journalism or uh, activism. So now I will switch to the, uh, my slides, my presentation. Um, let me do this and let me know if you see everything. So first, um, I will ask you, uh, so what social platforms do you use in your, uh, in your daily work, in your organizations, in your uh, media? And we will see what platforms perhaps I have to focus today. And I will be uh, speaking about new features, trends, developments. So please, you can vote. So now we have Facebook, Instagram leading. Yeah, and you see Facebook is dominating the world. Actually, even now, 35, 40 votes already uh, we have, and definitely we have leaders, Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn. So this is, um, this is a picture of the Western world. Majority of uh, uh, young and middle-aged people are using uh, Facebook-based, uh, Facebook-owned platforms. But if we look to other parts of the world, the dynamic is not the same. For example, in Mandarin-speaking world, in um, uh, Asia, in China, <clears throat> uh, Facebook, for example, is much weaker than Chinese platforms. In Russian-speaking countries and post-Soviet countries, uh, we have uh, the um, uh, growth of adnaclastic of contact. So I call this process um, balkanization of the internet. So for uh, majority of the countries, Facebook will remain the leading platform. But for um, countries in smaller areas and developing regions, Facebook will be uh, part of the infrastructure, but not the only one. So today I'm going to cover three major topics. First, uh, the shift to the deep web, um, what, what it means I will explain. Uh, second, emerging platforms and features. So what's happening um, today, tomorrow, what new uh, social media are going to uh, pop out and how you can use them. And I will cover a very, very bit um, the changes in algorithms. So basically how you can embrace um, the, the uh, newsfeed uh, things and make your content visible and higher in the, in the red. So uh, the major worldwide trend, and it's not only about the, uh, uh, the, the Russian space, uh, it's not only about Europe, it's about everywhere. People are tired of uh, algorithms. People are tired of filter bubbles. Uh, they don't want to uh, make everyone see their content. If they answer, if they post, if they uh, publish anything. So they basically uh, prefer messengers. And the first and perhaps the most popular in Eastern Europe is Telegram. Telegram is the messenger which allows uh, users also to publish. Anyone can create the channel and write about um, uh, kitties, politics, international relations, and only select a group of people which the manager, the editor will be able to pick, uh, will, will be seeing this content. People uh, create uh, small chats by interest on Facebook. For example, uh, Radio for Europe Belarus service, it has a main page, which is 100,000 subscribers, but it also has, uh, it also has, um, uh, pages, groups only for women, only about literature, only about um, a Belarusian language. And the um, conversion there is much higher than on the main page. And the part of deep web is dark web. It's something where illegal processes happen and drugs are being sold, uh, where you can uh, hire a killer if you need. Uh, but we today are, are going to speak about deep web, about this... Um, part of the internet, which is not searchable, which is hard to reach, which is loved by Russian propagandists, because uh, those who track Russian propaganda, for example, they can't uh, get there. The second important shift is uh, to direct platforms. So basically, there are um, uh, two types of platforms, uh, Facebook, Instagram, 
um, which are using algorithms based on your preferences, your behavior, uh, your search um, inquiries, and uh, non-algorithmic, where you are master of your own feed. Twitter was such a platform in the beginning, but Twitter uh, moved to algorithmic approach, same as other platforms. But now we see, again, messengers, those who embrace this. We also see experiments on Instagram, which uh, wants to allow users to choose algorithmic newsfeed or non-algorithmic newsfeed. And of course, mailing lists. In some countries, mailing lists are getting popular again. So we are back to the end of 90th. Uh, also podcasts. Podcasts are algorithmic. So this is why many people like podcasts because uh, they subscribe to the very specific topic they really, really like, and they want to see, receive every episode, every piece of this uh, content they are subscribed for. Hyper-targeting. So when before, um, if you want to dominate a media space, you had to create just a huge portal, invest $50,000, or if you were NGO activist, you had to, to, to spend some time to create your website. Now uh, it's not time of big elephants. Now it's a time of uh, uh, small, uh, vibrant communities. And it is employed not just by media or NGOs, but also by um, bad actors, by propagandists. So you can create uh, the huge page and get 100,000 fans on your Instagram like in two years, or you can create five pages, which can be connected by one brand color or font, whatever, or, but they will cover different topic and they will reach different niche groups, niche audiences. Social networks change. Uh, that's, that's, um, that's really a spectacular, because for the last seven years, uh, dozens of platforms uh, emerged, and majority of them died, where they were not able to compete. For example, Instagram was a very small platform like 10 years ago before Facebook acquired. After Facebook acquired and shared database of users with Instagram, uh, Instagram became uh, perhaps today one of uh, three biggest platforms in the world and it's getting bigger and bigger. Uh, same Twitch, Twitch was a small, small platform, but after Amazon, uh, bought it, which became not only the platform for gamers, but, but also platform for activists. In the United States, many um, uh, nonprofits are using Twitch, which is like game streaming platform usually, to, uh, to play chess, to play Lego, and same time to tell the story about their um, uh, LGBT rights, about uh, why it's important to go to elections, etc., etc. Uh, so I wanted to make the test for you, but since we don't have like um, here the, the um, a feedback, so I just want to introduce a few, few platforms. So after one cool platform appear, there will be also always competitor uh, to, to, uh, to, create, to be created. When TikTok, the Chinese platform, um, Paul, uh, bought, acquired musically, the, the music platform for kids in the United States, Facebook just immediately launched Lasso, which is small so far and which is not available in the majority of our markets. But Lasso will be getting bigger and bigger again because they have the, um, the database of Facebook. Twitch, Amazon's own platform for game streaming. I really recommend to, to, uh, to see the mechanics, how it works. Twitch is the best platform in the world in terms of uh, attention span. Average user can spend more than three hours a day on Twitch, watching and streaming its, its uh, games. And during the streams, same as on YouTube, people of course share their opinion on uh, situation, political situation in Poland, uh, Biden and Trump and uh, Bernie Sanders about dictatorship in Belarus. And this is also social media uh, platforms, uh, we can say. And Mixer is a Microsoft's own uh, platform, which is getting bigger um, since last fall. 
a mixer uh, hired the most popular Twitch streamers. And now I think uh, it's getting the same popular as, as the Twitch. So all these platforms are new for you, I suppose, and you don't use it on a daily basis, as we can see in the poll. But these are platforms that will be developing. So the world is changing. And Facebook-centric world is not forever. This is why it's very, very important to pay attention to what's growing and what's going on in, uh, in, uh, in, in users' preferences. Snapchat, very popular platform for kids, became worldwide global platform, and Instagram now tries to uh, challenge Snapchat with threads, which is available in some countries, and with uh, Reels, which is available in South America now. And of course, Tinder. Tinder is just like amazing. Tinder uh, is used not only for dating in many countries, but for news sharing. And news organizations, activists uh, organizing uh, digital campaigns on Tinder. In Ukraine, there is a campaign promoting uh, Ukrainian uh, medieval castles. In uh, Poland, uh, Tinder is used for, uh, to, to promote uh, uh, historical heritage as well. Uh, in America, Tinder is used to promote presidential and uh, Senate candidates. Uh, you can do it manually, you can do it automatically. So in, in some countries, it looks like a regular dating app. In some countries, it looks like um, a newsfeed. It has these newsfeed features. Just be, be ready to embrace everything. So major seven places, brands I want you to pay attention to. So TikTok, of course, uh, it has 1,500 uh, million downloads worldwide uh, for last two years. Uh, it's uh, getting the same popular as Instagram. It's not only for kids anymore. It's used by um, students, by journalists. Uh, for now, uh, World Health Organization and International NGO use Tinder to tell uh, about how to protect yourself from coronavirus. Uh, so the, the use of the platform is unlimited. The only limits are our uh, minds, our ideas. So if we can see beyond just posting links to our web page or just uh, putting nice pictures like we do on, on Instagram, uh, TikTok can be the solution. It needs more creativity. It needs some uh, some some time, but uh, the effect can be enormous. Uh, I will tell more about it later. Byte, Byte cre by, by, by wine creators, it's six seconds videos. It just was launched in America. In three months, it will be launched in Europe. It will be um, uh, basically um, the, the mix between Twitter, TikTok, and Instagram. Uh, this video, and Giphy. So this video will be short, looped, you can use it like to, uh, to, for very important uh, quotes, citations, statements, or for memes, or for jokes, or for making backstage from your organization. Yeah, last so mixer we mentioned, Reels is, uh, is going to be launched soon by, by Instagram, and it will be a basic copy of, of TikTok in terms of technology, AI, um, and, and users' behavior, users' consumption. And two uh, platforms from outside, I would say. One is very serious one launched by Wales uh, from Wikipedia. That's creator of Wikipedia who decided that all platforms are um, bullshit, I'm sorry, and uh, everything is not serious and people are looking for analytical content, for uh, reflections, for uh, meaningful conversation. And this is platforms which is like very bad looking, only text, white and black, uh, but a lot of comments, a lot of discussions. It looks like uh, forums from the end of 90s. So far you can get there by invitation only, uh, but or you can just apply and uh, be registered in one month. So this is the way how they hire the most dedicated users. And Giphy, uh, Giphy provides NGOs, activists and journalists with branded pages. And the cool stuff about Giphy that you can uh, put there um, short videos, short pictures, also jokes, but uh, it's very searchable. So if you put something on Giphy, let's say techsoupeurope.giphy.com, and if you if you'll type it in Google, it will be on the very, very top 
of, uh, of the uh, search page results. So TikTok. Yeah, I know that uh, many people are skeptical about TikTok, but I was from the very beginning um, was for using it. The thing is that uh, it's a Chinese platform uh, and we should use it very carefully uh, because China is definitely interested in our data and it works with data perfectly. That's uh, perhaps the world leader in, in uh, using personal data and information. But TikTok, uh, the, the uh, cost of not being there is much higher than the value of being there. There are hundreds, millions of people under 25, concentrated, focused, who are ready not just to watch video, but also to listen to music which makes it more beautiful than Instagram or Facebook, where people just watch the video without sound. TikTok, people watch and listen. So the effect of your videos, of your reports, of your interviews, uh, up to one minute, of course, can be much, much uh, bigger. Just find out what is your concept, what, what's going on, you know, what topics uh, uh, touch your audience. For Radio Free Europe, of course, it's Lukashenko, but Lukashenko is not only on, on TikTok, it's like on, on every basically platform. But NBC News is using it like for, um, for news and for user-generated content. Washington Post used TikTok for promoting uh, the newspaper and telling young people what is newspaper and why, uh, why they still uh, print. Uh, and there are TikTok competitors. Uh, they are, uh, some of these are very new. Sloy by Yandex is available only to Yandex users. Byte was launched, as I mentioned, one month ago, but it will be uh, expanded, uh, scaled to all the regions. And I, I suppose Byte can be competitor of TikTok and can become a big deal in Eastern Europe. For example, uh, Poland is one of the most um, um, dynamic countries in terms of embracing the new stuff. So uh, Poland was the first in Europe who use TikTok for journalism, all the radio stations in Poland using TikTok now, and I'm sure that um, uh, that Byte uh, will become also popular, I think, in, in Eastern Europe. Yeah, that's example from, that's example of uh, using um, uh, TikTok for, uh, for news, so Radio Free Europe, and that's actually not, uh, it was like one year ago, in July, uh, this video, the marriage of geese in Belarus, it's like a weird tradition. Um, 250,000 likes and 3,100 comments under this video. And it was viewed three million times. So it became viral uh, unexpectedly. It gave so many subscribers to uh, Radio Free Europe account and um, uh, clicks to the, uh, to the website. And this, is, and this is another type of content for TikTok. That's my father. Uh, he's uh, recording for uh, Radio Free Europe small uh, lessons on Belarusian language. Uh, specific words, specific terms, quotes. Uh, and um, these videos, 15 seconds and less, they're extremely popular. And uh, young people on TikTok who never uh, heard to Belarusian language, whenever exposed to Belarusian language, they love stuff like this. So Byte. Byte is looking, uh, as I mentioned, it's like a mix of uh, TikTok, Instagram, and um, Twitter. Six seconds, uh, you can upload whatever you want. You can look this video. You can add some uh, captions, headlines, uh, titles. What you need, you need creativity and some, some uh, basic idea of what you want to share with your followers. And now, Every platform, when you start it, when you launch it, it, it encourages user to experiment and encourages creators. So the early adapters are always winning. Those who embraced Instagram in 2009, they became millionaires uh, in terms of followership already in 2013-14 uh, and real millionaires perhaps now. So um, just follow this trend, follow new platforms, embrace them, be present there, and perhaps you will become a millionaire already next year. So real is the same stuff. What you do, you need to uh, combine video and sound. You have to play it with the audience. You can add poll and quiz. 
Um, yes, I know, you know, perhaps it's not popular now and you will say, come on, no, I'm using Facebook. Yes, it is, but it's not forever. We have to um, look not at uh, what is popular now, but what will be popular later. And Facebook is uh, overfilled with content, you know, it's, it's overcrowded. So it's very difficult to build the page and the followership on the page on the platforms like Facebook, Instagram, because so many competitors. And when you come to uh, TikTok, to Reels, uh, there are many young people who are experimenting, looking for cool stuff. You just get a direct contact to them. And this is how uh, this Wikipedia uh, page, Wikipedia style social networks looks like. So this is basically a forum form where you can choose the topic you like for example you type putin and there is the whole uh, news feed about putin and everyone who writes about putin who likes putin who hates putin uh, will be um, uh, in this feed so basically it's like a social network but uh, where news feeds are formed not uh, based on your own interests uh, not on your news feed but on, on the interest you pick so you are in charge of your of your feed non algorithms so try this WT social and see how many people are there already. So this is intellectuals, this is intelligentsia, this is people looking for serious discussions. Uh, that's much more serious than a Reddit forum, uh, which has like uh, its versions or analogs in different countries. In uh, in Poland, it's uh, uh Yeah, but but in every country different different forum. But Reddit is the model for everyone. Uh, but there are also like uh, local uh, and funny uh, social networks, for example, Kadyrov, the Chechen um, guy who uh, was uh, banned on Instagram. He was upset, he was uh, angry, and uh, he didn't um, claim that uh, his deletion from Instagram was fair. He just created his own uh, social platform. He embraced um, uh, my listery which was the development perhaps of Russian or Chechen developers. And um, after Kadyrov came there, all other politicians uh, in Russia also moved there. Uh, why, uh, why I mentioned this, uh, just to make sure you understand that not all the world living in Facebook and the world doesn't begin there, the world doesn't end there. And uh, you never know what will be in three, six months. So Reddit, we mentioned, Reddit is very cool for crowdsourcing content. So basically, if you want cool stuff, viral picture or idea, you just go to this forum, see what people discuss, uh, what pictures they post, um, what topics they, they share, and you put it to your platforms, your pages, and there is a very big chance this, become, this will become uh, viral, popular, and shared at your pages as well. For example, you know, very weird exercises like, uh, 46 minus 15 plus something, uh, how did you count it? And people write in comments, you know, the two or three ways how they counted this, um, uh, how they, they dealt this exercise, how they solved the problem. And this is, was idea from Reddit. You know, people from Facebook will never, will never invent something like this. But on Reddit, people spend time, they have a lot of time, and they, uh, yeah, they, they share it um, widely. So messenger, I will skip it. Yeah, messengers, yeah, here. So I, I made this map uh, for to understand um, the, the world of messengers. So WhatsApp is the empire. WhatsApp is basically in every country of the world is the leading platform. But in the most of these countries, WhatsApp is used only for personal communications only for uh, um, uh, or, or calling or video calls but not as the platform so but it doesn't mean that in time whatsapp will not become same as telegram and uh, what we know from facebook people already this year so they promised in february but perhaps it will take more time the whatsapp facebook messenger and instagram messenger will become one platform, would become one app. They did already the big step towards this. They unified a um, contact list. So now there is one contact list for all three platforms. And next step, perhaps March, April, May, you will go to your uh, messenger app, let's say, and you will be able to do 
um, to call, to write, to communicate with your Instagram users and WhatsApp subscribers. So Facebook just wants to compete Viber, Telegram, uh, Japanese Korean networks. In order to do this, they want to, um, they want to be stronger. So one huge messenger, which will dominate the world, as you see on this map, blue and green become, will become one power. Viber here is Japanese, I explain why, because um, Viber was developed in Israel and Belarus, and partly in Ukraine, but uh, Rakuten, Japanese company, acquired Viber. So technically it's owned by Japanese, but of course the development is Eastern European. Uh, trending features I want to show you, uh, and these features really work. I really recommend to, to use them. Some of them are limited to pages with uh, 1,000 or 10,000 followers, um, but it's good to know the uh, opportunities. So YouTube community, uh, Facebook uh, live split screens, uh, more and more features there. Um, Instagram masks and other stuff you can create by yourself. A link in the bio, polls and quizzes. And let me give you some examples. Stories. So first of all, stories. Uh, stories are everywhere. Stories are part of the deep web thing. Why? Because on stories and all the communication after stories is always private. This is not very deep. Let's say it's very surfacial web, as I mentioned in the beginning, but uh you basically uh post the story just to inspire conversation in your private messages afterwards uh yesterday twitter launched stories yesterday and twitter acquired several startups producing cool stories so it's going to invest a lot in this LinkedIn is the next. They're preparing stories for, um, uh, for their user already this, this year. YouTube stories are amazing, but in some countries, users don't know about their existence yet, but that's an issue of time only. So if you want to be uh, on trend, you have to embrace it. You need a separate person and you need to be authentic. You need to um, use stories to, to cover, you know, your work and, and, and your feeling and your thoughts and comment on actual events to use it to promote your own agenda of your organization. So Twitter stories look like this, you see. So basically it's a copy of Instagram Facebook feature. Uh, so in some countries it's launched already. If you can upload your Twitter app today, this is what we, you, you, you will see. And, um, and that's, that's pretty cool. So YouTube stories. YouTube stories are available only on YouTube app. There are two audiences on YouTube, remember. One audience is desktop. These are people who are coming home, uh, switching on their TV screen and watching YouTube long videos, interviews, and they can just like stay forever on YouTube. And there is a short span audience on YouTube, which is staying like for a few minutes. Uh, same, they consume Facebook or Instagram, and stories are the solution for them. If they are don't have time to watch the whole video, they just like watch the uh, the teaser in the form of stories. The YouTube community, look, this is amazing thing. Ninety nine percent of uh, creators, publishers, media don't know about this. If you go to your YouTube app uh, to the community thing and you are uh, posting there the same way you post on Facebook, you can get thousands, thousands of likes. So for some services of um, US international media, uh, for some uh, pages like in, in Africa, particularly the West America and Southeast Asia, uh, community thing can give uh, 10, 20,000 clicks at one moment. You will never get this without advertising on other platforms. And uh, YouTube is uh, promoting community actively. Uh, so may, more and more users who are subscribed to your page will be exposed to your content, not only your video content, but your website content, your uh, visuals, infographics and stuff. So try to, try to uh, experiment with this and I will be happy to, uh, to share with you some links who, who use it, um, of pages who use it like perfectly. Split screen. We also like underuse this feature, but Instagram and Facebook uh, put promote this kind of uh, duets. 
So basically, you begin live stream. Today, we are discussing coronavirus. And here, I'm connecting the, my friend from Wuhan, in isolated Wuhan, where she's like, she's still not sick. And they discuss, they make jokes or not um, about, about all stuff. So it's always on the top. It's always the first in the, in the story's feed. Um, you can disconnect your friend. You can connect another friend. It's up to you how you work with this. Uh, but um, what you need, you need a topic. Always need a topic. Remember, we don't create content in sake of creating content. We create content for uh, involving people to discussion. Uh, we want community building. We want people to know why they came uh, to our page. Link in bio. Or perhaps I can... Uh, okay, so you can see here. Yes. LinkedIn bio, that's one of many features to let, uh, mo not monetize, but um, use your Instagram for traffic. So basically you put in the description of your Instagram account, one link, link to LinkedIn bio. LinkedIn bio is the feature owned by uh, Later, service Later. I will share all these all this, uh, names with you later, well, these titles. So basically it's the page where people um, click go from your Instagram page and all the pictures you posted are clickable. So on Instagram, people cannot click on the picture and go to your website. A link in bio is like a mediator between your Instagram account and your website. So for some um, services uh, of uh, radio for Europe, for example, a link in bio generates um, thousands of clicks. If you have um, even 1,000 followers, LinkedIn Bio can give you like up to 100 clicks per day if you'll be updated. Instagram masks. So that's another uh, cool feature. Um, you can use it with, uh, uh, with some Adobe tool. Uh, so there is um, Adobe, Adobe, Adobe Creator, what's, what's his name? Uh, the, the AR um, enabling Adobe tool to create mask. It can be, for example, a friend of mine create mask uh, to protect from coronavirus. So, for example, if you are afraid to get sick, you just like put this mask on Instagram and, uh, and uh, it cures, um, supposedly. Uh, but uh, the, the big feature, that's a part of your Instagram identity. So you can see if you create a mask, you, it will be seen just right in the profile. Uh, Telegram polls, for use who use Telegram, it's a great feature to involve engaged audience. Before, you were able to do this only with bots, with special automated uh, bots that create uh, interactives. Now it's in the app, in app. So basically we can uh, play with the audience, we can test the audience, we can challenge it. Uh, the poll, uh, to you, the question, what types of content do you post? I want to ask you now. Uh, Maya, can we switch? Can we play there? Yeah, thanks so much. Uh, please take your um, uh, trackpads or uh, mice and answer the question. Yeah, links to the website, pictures, videos. Cool. I see. I see. I'm very, I'm very interested about podcasts. You know, I will be happy to discuss it because podcasts was uh, such a big thing a few years ago, and I had a huge inspiration about it. But now I see that podcasts uh, became popular in some markets, and in some markets, absolutely not. Um, links to the website, pictures, photos. Okay, pictures, photos. Very cool. Very cool. So uh, basically, basically. Uh, pictures and photos, uh, this is the main content uh, worldwide until 2016. But for now and from now and forever, animation and videos will be the king. So links to the website is a good thing, but uh, platforms, they don't want uh, people to leave their platforms. They want to keep you on the page. This is why Google created um, AMP, Amplified uh, Accelerated Mobile Pages. Facebook is using instant articles, which keeps people in the app. So be ready to create content, messages, stuff that doesn't need links to the website. 
clicks on the website are not more valuable than engagements on social media platforms. And I will explain you how to increase your engagements now. Um, but these results are cool. I think you know we can we can share it later in the okay. So I'll continue. So changes in algorithms. Uh, can we can we stop this poll? Already stopped. Mm -hmm. Okay, because I see somehow. Okay. Uh, but you see the screen, right? Yes, we do. Yeah, cool. Okay, perfect. So that's my last part uh, before Q and A. So, uh, how to increase your engagement and your exposure, your visibility? Super tough question. Um, so, can I switch? One second, one second. I will try to draw and let me know if you see what I'm drawing, okay? Uh, one second, one second. Uh, how the content works? Whiteboard. Let me know if you see. Do you see what I'm drawing? Yeah, we can see it. Awesome. So basically, three types of uh, content development on 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 social media. So first of all, it's a viral content. This can be created by hype to topic or a keyword. So it goes like this, and it's falling down right away. So this is where we use you know uh, important events, uh, the words that uh, that. Um, a bite to the words that uh, discussed. So we can use you know, some provocations, you know, some funny stuff. So this is viral. So viral is cool that it gives you, okay, my drawing is not very bad, not very good. So this viral. So, and this type of content doesn't give you much followers and doesn't give loyalty. Another type of content is um, long tailed content. And this is my favorite one. So basically there is a, boom there is a spike and later it goes down very slowly 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 so the majority of uh, engagements are collected in this part not when the uh, post was made but um, aggregated numbers after so it can last for months for two months and uh, in order to do this create you have to support comments discussions the narrative um, of, of the post you have made. And another type of content is evergreen that you can just create and it will be, you can post like 50 times a year and people will be still liking and, and sharing it. So these three types of content and three, three more slides and I, I, I will switch back. So, uh, and I will show you what we do, what we do. So if we want to make the content long tail, to support it, to make it, to keep it alive, we should discuss, we should use comments, 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 comments. And also this is why sometimes longer videos are performing better because in longer videos, people stay longer. So YouTube uh, likes longer videos because it counts not the percentage of video watched, it counts the aggregated number of minutes watched per video. Reactions like doesn't play any role. So don't count them, ignore them. Uh, views, the post was viewed so many times, doesn't mean anything. That's vanity metrics. So focus on engage time for video and comments. Oh, sorry. Yeah, and uh, this is the, this is the uh, scheme. Um, this is the scheme that's the weight of each uh, type of engagement. So basically, uh, the size of common matters the uh, popularity of the person who made the comment matter, and um, uh, and of course the replies to the comments matter. So it's much better to have one comment with four under comments replies than to have five comments from different people. So this is why uh, in your Facebook feed you, you can see posts with the comment threads. So negative feedback also matters. Uh, so on Facebook, it looks like I don't want to see this uh, content anymore, blah, 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 or hide this post. I don't want to see um, uh, um, content from this creator anymore. On uh, uh, TikTok, there is uh, hide and dislike. On YouTube, there is dislike. So this negative feedback uh, is counted by algorithms too. Oh my God, so this slide is going crazy. Yeah, and editing posts. Uh, if you edit post, the um, 
the, the, the platform reassess the popularity of this. So be careful with this. If the, popular, if the post is popular, don't edit it just for one word or one sign or to add smiley because uh, it will, it, its rating will be reassessed, recounted, and you can lose all this popularity, all this ranking um, made by, by engagement there. I will skip it. The time of content also matters. Remember, two audiences, desktop and mobile. This is like two words, two worlds, which do not overlap always. So people on desktop are usually um, uh, spend time online across the day. Uh, and especially in the working hours uh, during the day because they come to their offices, they don't have anything to do. Uh, they just go to their computer and then do play, play some stuff, watch videos and read articles. And people on mobile, of course, much more people on mobile worldwide, but they usually um, go to go online and play on social media during the lunches, breaks, when commuting, and of course, uh, when they come back home, uh, on laying on sofa and playing with their smartphones. So short content for evening time and for mobile users, more serious, long content that needs like more attention and perhaps sound for uh, daily time. Location matters. It's important where we post. It's, for, it's both for Facebook, it works for stories, for TikTok, so first of all, the content will be exposed, will be shown to people who are around you. So uh, first of all, to people who are like under 10 miles, under 30 miles, uh, region and country. So if you ad attended the protest or event, just make sure to post from there. Otherwise, when you go home, uh, your post from the concert or event will be seen by your neighbors, but not by the people who also attended the event. Uh, yeah, and some tools, I will share this uh, list of my, my preferred, preferred tools in Overview so you can play with them. And now the final test. So we have three questions for you. Yes, Maya, yes, can you help yes, me with this? yes, yes, of course. I'm, so uh, please, attention, now we have test, which is very simple. And uh, so you can answer and I will tell you the, the real results after. So first question, what was the most downloaded app worldwide in January 2020? This, so you can, you can answer already. Please go ahead. Big test in progress. Um, yes, yeah, so first, what was the most downloaded app worldwide in January 2020? Facebook, Skype, Fortnite, Tinder, TikTok. Fortnite is actually the game. Uh, okay, I will tell more. So no, no, no tips here. Uh, I don't see the results. Exactly, I don't see. Is there a problem? Oh, no, yeah, you can vote. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. Yeah, awesome, awesome, cool. Okay, so what was the most downloaded app worldwide in January 2020? Facebook, Skype, Fortnite, Tinder, or TikTok? Please answer the second question. Which company heavily invests in VR spaces and owns the brand Horizon and Oculus? And the last question, no, the third question, which of these messengers is the most famous multiple anonymous channels in Europe used to spread this information? And what is the part of the internet with those groups, secret chats and messengers and communities on Facebook not open to the wider audience? Uh, okay, so. I think we should, you know, give, uh, we should give, because like 40% of people voted, so let's give, uh, it's a lot of questions so, so that everybody has time to read sure. them and answer them just like 10 more seconds, and then I'll share the results. 50% voted. Tough questions, tough test, I know. <laughs> exactly. It's serious stuff, it's serious content, it's knowledge we have to have, so the test has to be serious as well. Yeah, but, but yeah, again, so while you're answering, the idea is to experiment, to try, this uh, digital space is evolving much faster than anything else in the world. Um, in 20th century, you know, we had the era of TV, era of radio, which lasts like few, few decades. But now digital eras are getting like even shorter, like two, three years. Uh, so Facebook perhaps is the most living creature in the digital space ever. But uh, its time will be over too. 
Um, yeah, so we have results, right? Yep. So first, yeah, TikTok is the most downloaded app. That's absolutely correct. Which company have an invest in VR spaces and all their brands, Horizon and Oculus? So this is not correct. The correct answer is Facebook. And Facebook actually owns Oculus. That's a VR sets, VR glasses. And they're going to uh, create the space Horizon. So basically you wear your glasses uh, and you go online. You can chat, you can, it's, a, it's, it's like a, a virtual world. You can meet your friends um, from Argentina or from Australia. You can play games just being within this virtual space. It's like uh, reality from the movies. For now, it's accessible only to the specific users of Oculus, but it's getting more and more um, uh, accessible to, to other um, devices as well. So Oculus, follow the Oculus and what they, what they do there. Uh, which of these messengers is the most famous? Of course, it's Telegram, right answer. And what is the part of the internet with closed group secret chats and messengers communities? Yes, that's a deep web. So yeah, uh, dark web, this is a part of deep web, but dark web needs a special access passwords uh, and mostly used for terrorist operations, for drug uh, uh, trade. Uh, but deep web, that's uh, part of the... Um, and visible uh, World Wide Web. But you, you did a great job, so almost all, uh, all questions are answered correctly. So I'm, I'm, going, I'm ready to take your questions. Yes, uh, just a technical thing, because we've gathered questions throughout uh, Franek's amazing presentation, but if you have uh, new ones, then please post them in the chat. Uh, we'll be gathering them. And I'll just read out loud um, some, of, some that we have already. I think something that may be relevant to those of you who are from smaller organizations, Eniko asked, for a smaller organization, uh, how many social media platforms would you recommend to use on a regular basis? Uh, great question. So it's up to the capacity of your organization. If, it's, uh, if this organization, organization connected to public politics, to electoral campaigns, to communication processes, you need to embrace uh, all possible platforms where you can reach your audience. So I think you know that everything now is about communication. Even organizations that work like on, I don't know, in healthcare, let's say accessible healthcare, it's also about communication, how you communicate your message, how you get followers, how you recruit volunteers. So presence on social media, it's not additional instrument or, um, or demand or opportunity. That's must need, must have. Many NGOs of new type, they are only working on social media. They lobby on social media, they recruit people on social media, they publish there as well. So uh, regarding number of platforms, I would recommend to have at least two platforms. In markets like uh, Romania, Georgia, Armenia, um, heavily dominated by Facebook, where Facebook is like super, uh, super only, uh, super platform, um, you can focus on Facebook and let's say YouTube. But if you work with young people, Perhaps you can consider just going to these new platforms where younger people are based. Remember that in five years, young people will become adult people and all their habits and, um, and uh, preferences that they will bring to their life and they will, um, they will um, promote them all among their communities as, as well. Uh, yes, yeah, so basic answer, like minimum two, ideally everywhere where your audience is, is living. Great. Uh, there are two kind of specific, and I guess you'll share them afterwards, but uh, uh, we have questions about um, links to websites that provide fresh data on the number of users of each social network. I think that's interesting for people from different countries to get a better picture, right? Uh, Sasha asked that. Um, and uh, have you, um, and the other one, sorry, 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 was... Um, I'm sorry, I mm, mm, sorry, I lost it. But basically, yeah, yeah, so, there, are, there are, uh, uh, these are questions. You, maybe you don't have to answer them, but just for us to make sure to remember that. Um, to where do you get your data from? Basically, where to get? Got it. 
on what got it, got it. It's awesome, mm -hmm. awesome question. Thanks so much. So about the uh, number of users. Um, I recommend to use uh, several platforms to check uh, the um, popularity of platforms. So for as for uh, general platforms like Facebook, Instagram, you can go to a stats counter, stats counter, like S-T-A-T-S counter dot com and they provide um, analytics per country, per device, uh, per user, per language, what platforms are popular, what devices are popular, what smartphones they use. You can also check the uh, Statista, it's a German aggregator of analytics and uh, the free version they uh, they allow all users to see the general analytics on, on usage of platforms, especially on Instagram. It's very interesting because you can see the social demographic portrait of Instagram in basically each country. As for Instagram, there is also a very, very cool service, Napoleon Cat. Napoleon Cat, it's Polish actually, it's Polish agency. They, they do Instagram analysis. Uh, you can use free version of um, uh, social bakers as well to find influencers and popular uh, pages uh, and they also show how many profiles and creators are per country social bakers uh, social bakers and uh, you can play with a free version of similar web similar web actually is buying um, data from applications and um, desktop browsers and they uh, allow users to see uh, analytics on competitors on platforms on different pages i will be happy to share uh, to share you know this um, names of these of the pages with you afterwards in in the facebook event for example if you wish um i and I, I can share any analytics with you as well by request so it's not a problem it's not secret information uh and it's very right question actually always to ask about tiktok particular question so central europe is growing extremely fast with TikTok and you cannot stop it. You know, TikTok is not something like you can use or cannot, you can uh, just ignoring TikTok will not uh, stop its growth. So what, what we have to do, we have to see the way to make it useful for our agenda, for our activism, for our um, uh, outlets. That's the only way. You will not be able to stop. That's Chinese platforms. Chinese uh, culture is to build presence forever. You know, they, they don't intend to be present like for two years. They, they, they like to build like strategy for 500 years. So, mm -hmm. and, and I think, you know, that um, it's just the beginning of this uh, world diversification of digital uh, uh, platforms. Um, yeah, Alex, sorry, and because I, the, I think she has a question that might be on a lot of people's minds. Um, is there a way to make social media uh, managing easier and taking less time, as in making a piece of content spread on all these story-based platforms without doing it individually on each platform? So basically managing your different platforms. Yeah, that's that's wonderful, wonderful question. Uh, Yes, so there is a way, um, I will not show you, I, we don't have time to show how it works, um, but I will share again the screen with the uh, applications, if you don't mind. Uh, so first of all, uh, planners. Planners save 50% of your time, so don't afraid to use them. Hootsuite, Buffer, SMM Planner, you can uh, schedule uh, Instagram story, you can schedule the tweet, you can schedule whatever you want. Even the TikTok videos can be scheduled. So basically, you on Monday, if you don't have time, you, you spend like four hours and you schedule the posts for the whole week. But what you have to do later to answer the comments, to go and to see the analytics, how your posts perform. Even if you schedule posts, it doesn't mean that you forget about it. Social media, it's like 24 hours work and it needs effort from every member of your team so it shouldn't be like only the social media guy who is in charge and other people they just don't care about this it doesn't work you will never be the build the presence if you'll be uh, working like this so planners are cool buffer uh, my my favorite one and uh, i like a lot um the tool uh, which is not on this list if this then that i f t t if this then that um I will try to type it here very quickly, very briefly. Whiteboard. Uh, Don't worry, we'll post it, we'll gather it all, and we'll add it to the follow-up email. 
yeah, that's the name of this tool. So if you can see, just if this then E I F T T T. Uh, so this is the tool which allows you to automatically repost content. For example, uh, if there is a video with a thousand likes on my Facebook profile, automatically post it on Twitter or on Vkontakte or on YouTube or whatever. So basically we just um, organize uh, the, the system, the mechanics. If something happens, then the system automatically posts something um, uh, somewhere else. So just automate your processes, you know, everything can be simplified and automated. Lesser manual work, more time for cool stuff you will have left. Yeah, we unfortunately, it's already two o'clock and we promised to uh, end on time. And there are so many questions, there are wonderful questions about the issue about spreading disinformation, the more platforms, the more disinformation of ways of stopping that. But as this webinar is focused, we, we planned it to focus only mostly on practical things that I'm so sorry, we won't be answering those. But maybe the last one, um, the last one, which is interesting as it relates to different audiences than we might usually uh, direct our communications to. Um, and Anata asked, have you any, do you have any information about what social media platforms do people with visual impairment use mostly? Oh my gosh, no, that's, uh, that's a tough question. <laughs> um, visual impairment. Um, a good question, I have to explore more. I, I don't answer for now, but that's, no, but that's, yeah, that's a very cool question. So this is a good topic, you know, for the next um, for the next webinar, I think. Uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that, I that's think. a that's a good that's a good one. Yeah, I think you know most of the platforms they have some features. Uh, I'm sure that Facebook and larger platforms they they allow you know and audio um, uh, caption you know how to say this, uh, but I am not the big specialist in this. But I I promise I will I will study this. Yes, amazing. Um, I'm so sorry. Um, I'm so sorry. We have to finish. Uh, Faranak, first of all, thank you so, so much. This was extremely useful and I think I can speak for others. Um, we will be, thank you all for joining because at some point there was more, uh, more than a hundred of us. As I mentioned many, many times, you will get the recording of the webinar and additional links and names of apps and platforms from Fanac in an email that will reach you tomorrow. Um, and we invite you very much to uh, join and follow, um, to join our next webinars and follow our social media where we'll be posting a lot of content related to social media and activism. Um, yeah. So, let yeah. Me thank you. Yeah, let me. Thank uh, TechSoup for organizing this. Um, uh, Anka, Maya, you did a great job. Uh, so it's wonderful to work together. Um, uh, also join our digital communication network page. Let me, exactly. <laughs> let me have the moment you know, to, to promote our, our work. Uh, so we have the exchange in the United States announced now. So the deadline is in one week and we accept um, applicants from 13 countries for one month trip to Brussels and Washington to work in uh, digital communication organizations and to study more uh, the digital world. Amazing. We'll post a link in the email uh, as well so you'll be able to find out more. Thank you all so, so much and uh, see you soon. Bye. Bye-bye.